Welcome back to Data Structures and Algorithms in JavaScript. In the last section, we covered three types of collections, arrays, linked lists, and sets. This is the first video of section three, where we'll talk about two special kinds of lists, queues and stacks. First, we'll cover queues, which are lists that enforce the first in, first out rule. Items that are inserted into the list first are used or removed from the list first. Next, we'll talk about stacks, which are lists that enforce the last in, first out rule. While the two rules that these structures are built on may seem simple, there are very powerful algorithms that are solved using queues and stacks. Let's get started by looking at queues. We'll start out by looking at what a queue is and what kinds of problems we can solve with them. Next, we'll go over the supported operations on a queue. After that, we'll look at a simple implementation of a queue class in JavaScript. Finally, we'll go over a real-world example of using a queue to perform background I.O. tasks. Queues are lists that preserve the insertion order of elements, such that the first element added to the list is the first item to be removed. You can think of a queue much like the line at a supermarket where you stand behind people waiting for your turn to process your purchases with the cashier. People exit the line in the same order that they entered it. The same idea is implemented in a queue data structure. A common use case for a queue is a task queue. Tasks to be performed are added to a queue, then they're processed in the same order that they were added to the queue. The usual operations in a queue are NQ, DQ, and length. The NQ operation adds elements to the queue. Remember that elements are always added to the end or the back of the queue. The DQ operation is the opposite of NQ, which you can think of behaving similar to an array.pop. Items are always removed from the front of the queue. And length, which is not really an operation, is a simple property that lets us know how many items are in the queue. At the heart of our queue class that we'll implement in this section will be an array which we use to store all of our items. For convenience, we'll allow the constructor to receive an existing array that we can wrap by our abstraction. In order to further hide implementation details, we'll expose our own length property. The NQ function takes an item and pushes it to the end of the queue. Since we're manually keeping track of the length of the queue, we need to be sure and increment the current length property. Finally, in order to maintain a similar interface to the array, we return the same thing that is returned when you call array.push, which happens to be the new length of the array after the new item is inserted. Dequeuing an item is almost as easy as popping an item off of an array. The two differences are that first, we need to decrease the length property if prior to the dequeuing operation, there is at least one item in the list. Second, we remove and return that item that was currently sitting at the front of the queue. Thankfully, JavaScript provides a shift function on the array's prototype which does just what we want. If the queue is already empty prior to the DQ call, the output will be undefined and the length will remain zero. In this example, we'll use our queue inside a RESTful API that we can call from our application. Instead of making the client wait for the API to process and persist the data, we can schedule the associated task using a queue. Whenever some other script processing the tasks in the background calls a complementary API, the task is removed from the queue and the application is then free to do with the data whatever you want. In the next video, we'll take a look at stacks, which are similar to queues in the sense that data flows in and out of the stack in the same way, although stacks provide an interesting twist to them. 